a most peculiar report stating that the renowned scientist and France's first female astronaut Claudie Hainera had to be forcefully restrained after screaming Earth must be warned, prior to her falling into a coma from a reported overdose of sleeping pills in an apparent attempt at suicide. Of Dr. Hainera's suicide attempt we can read from French media sources. The first French woman in space has been hospitalized after she tried to take her own life, according to published reports. Claudie Hainera, 51, was hospitalized after she tried to commit suicide, an unidentified French government source told Agents France Press. Another source told AFP that Hainera overdosed on pills. Hainera, a rheumatologist, flew to the Mir space station as an astronaut in 1996 and to the International Space Station, ISS, in 2001. She studied how humans adapt their motor and cognitive skills in weightlessness and monitored astronauts from the ground. Later, on the Mir, she performed experiments in physiology, developmental biology, fluid physics, and technology, according to the European Space Agency. More ominously, these reports continue, was that within hours of Dr. Hainera's alleged suicide attempt her laboratory, where she worked on the forefront of human-slash-alien DNA research, at the world-renowned Pasteur Institute was destroyed by fire, and as we can read as reported by the Associated Press News Service. Fire broke out Wednesday in a biology laboratory at the Pasteur Institute in Paris, famed for research on fighting infectious diseases, officials said. No victims were reported, and no sensitive materials or viruses were affected by the fire, which was extinguished by firefighters, an official at the institute said. The official was not authorized to be publicly named according to company policy. The cause of the blaze was unclear. The fire broke out mid-morning in an underground level of one of the buildings in the institute's campus in southern Paris, a lab that conducts research in developmental biology, the official said. Reports on Dr. Hainera state that since her return from space she had become convinced that our Earth had been visited in our historical past by ancient astronauts who had not only had colonized our planet but had genetically engineered the then existing semi-human life forms into our present-day human race. Dr. Hainera's beliefs mirror those of the prominent Israeli writer and researcher Zechariah Sitchin who it is reported, attributes the creation of the ancient Sumerian culture to the Anunnaki, or Nephilim a race of aliens from a planet he calls Nibiru which he believes to be in an elongated, elliptical orbit in the Earth's own solar system. Sitchin asserts that Sumerian mythology reflects this view, though his speculations are entirely discounted by mainstream scientists, historians, and archaeologists, who see many problems with his translations of ancient texts and with his understanding of physics. It is also interesting to note the timing of Dr. Hainera's alleged suicide attempt coming at the exact time that concerns are growing over the growing deployment of global naval forces around the Middle Eastern region believed to have been the location of the ancient Garden of Eden, and which we had reported on in our December 21st report titled World Shipping Comes to Halt as Global Navies Prepare for Unprecedented Confrontation and where we had noted that global naval forces currently steaming towards, or already in, the Gulf of Aden include friends and foes alike the United States, Iran, China, Russia, Germany, Switzerland, European Union, and India under what these reports state is the cover story of protecting the shipping lanes of that region from the US-backed pirates operating out of Somalia. Current news from this region are, also, appearing to show that hostilities have already begun between our Earth's defense forces and the watchers as like the United States' last attempt to attack these aliens by themselves this past January has, once again, resulted in massive cuts by the watchers to the many undersea communication cables laying upon the seafloors of this region which have now isolated large parts of the Middle East and the subcontinent. Equally important to note is that for the first time in centuries Chinese warships have left their home waters to join the massive international effort to confront what is seen as our Earth's most serious threat ever, and that when attempting to confront an undersea anomaly off the coast of Papua New Guinea villagers reported a UFO-like craft rapidly ascending from the ocean and streaking skyward leaving in its aftermath giant swells which have left nearly 32,000 homeless and which the United Nations is now rushing aid towards. To the catastrophic damage wrecked upon Papua New Guinea the UN is reporting that the swells destroyed houses, food and water supplies, 
damaged crops and led to the loss of gardening tools. To what Dr. Hainera was attempting to warn our world about it is not to our knowing, other than to point out the obvious conclusion that whatever had caused this most distinguished of scientists to be in such great distress could, indeed, be a prelude of more, and even stranger, events ready to overtake us in the days and months to come.